It's been about nine months since I purchased the M1 Mac Mini, the absolute base model with eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gig hard drive, the cheapest computer I've ever used, and also arguably the most powerful computer that I've ever used. So after nine months, does the Mac Mini Mac Mini need more power? So if you were to ask me, do I still like this computer? Do I still recommend this computer? Do I still think it's an awesome value? Should you get it if it seems like something you need? My answer is yes. But we can probably dive into things with a little bit more detail and there are a handful of issues that have popped up. Nothing that would stop me from recommending this computer, but definitely things that I just hadn't had time to experience when I made my initial review about a month after getting it. So the first thing to address is the performance of the computer. And this thing is completely ridiculous. It still has never made a sound. It's never gotten hot. In my first video about it, I, I kind of put it through a stress test where I was like, let's open up Final Cut Pro and Photoshop and Adobe Audition and a whole bunch of Chrome tabs and just all this stuff at once. And I thought, you know, who in their right mind would end up doing these things? Well, it turns out that when you have a computer capable of doing those things, you actually end up doing it a lot. Ultimately, the reason I like it so much, aside from being a good value, is because it does that thing which is really important for a technological tool to do, and that's get out of the way. I don't have to spend a lot of time thinking about my computer. I can spend more time working on what I want to work on, you know, making a video, building a website, whatever it is that I'm doing. The computer gets out of the way and lets me do that for the most part, for the most part. Now, the biggest question I've been getting is, is eight gigabytes really enough? And my answer, short answer is yes, because that's, I'm still using that same base model. Video is not sponsored or anything. Had a whole bunch of people saying that I was like paid by Apple to make my last video. I bought my computer at Best Buy for full price. So didn't even buy it directly from Apple, which I normally would do, but they just didn't have any in stock. The other big change to my workflow has been with video because I got a new camera last spring. So about three or four months after getting the computer, I got the Sony a7S III, which is a 4K camera. And basically my video workflow had been dealing with upscale 1080 footage. And now it deals primarily with full on native 4K footage. The files are big and the files are very tough to edit. And that has been where the computer sometimes stutters just a little bit. It basically just means in Final Cut Pro, if I'm not using proxies, I need to import the footage and wait for it all to render out. The only other hiccups are when I have like layers and layers of 4K footage. So if I have like three, four, five layers plus audio and I'm just constantly like cutting and moving, cutting and moving, sometimes Final Cut needs a little bit of time to catch up. That is totally fine with me because it's still relatively smooth. I did rent a Blackmagic 6K Pro earlier this spring for a while and I was editing 6K raw footage on it. Computer handled it totally fine. I've been doing a lot of streaming with the computer and I even did do a stress test live stream where I basically opened up all the applications I could while streaming. So I was running Ecamm Live and then I started editing and exporting 4K video, working in Photoshop, working in Adobe Audition. There, now I'm recording in Audition and I have Ecamm streaming and I have Final Cut over here. And then I've got, yeah, Audition is recording and Photoshop is Photoshopping. That's pretty good. I also do have Chrome open. I have multiple Chrome tabs open, so for the stream. So that's pretty good. Long story, super long, eight gigabytes is more than enough. However, I do think that if you have the budget for 16 gigs, this is one of those rare cases where Apple isn't totally overly pricing their memory. So if that's in your budget and the computer's available, I don't think you'll regret that. For me, I wanted to buy the cheapest computer possible because I was a little dubious of the M1 chips at the time. I didn't know if it was like all hype or not. And also there were no 16 gigabyte ones available. If I ordered one, it was gonna be a few months before I got it. And this is not to sound boastful or anything, but I really don't think most people push their computers as hard as I do on a regular basis. That's not like, look at me, I deserve a medal for that. But it just means like every day I'm doing all kinds of video stuff, graphic stuff, design stuff. And even if you don't do those things, those are really hard tasks for computers to process and handle. So if it's handling that well for me, there's a really good chance it will handle what you need it to handle. But of course, 
If you're using very specific software or you're working for a company that uses some kind of proprietary software, you, you know, it's gonna be up to you to kind of see if that's actually gonna work out. But I did mention that I'd had a few issues with the computer. None of these would make me not recommend the computer, but it's definitely worth bringing up. There's really about three things that have happened. The first one is kind of weird and I'm not sure if it just has to do with my keyboard or the computer or those like, Bluetooth connectivity issues that you kind of heard about with some of the M1 things. But every once in a while, like maybe two or three times a month, when my computer has been asleep for a long time, like overnight, and I come in in the morning and turn it on, the keyboard suddenly has a crazy amount of lag to it. So if I type something in here, it's like five to seven seconds before it sort of like, <clears throat> like quickly fills in on screen. Fortunately, all I have to do is restart the computer and the problem is totally fixed. It hasn't happened as much lately, so I don't know if a recent software update has fixed it, but it's something that's happened a few times a month since I've gotten the computer. In a similar fashion, another thing to do with the sleep system on the computer is sometimes when I wake the computer from sleep, the computer wakes up and I can push keys on the keyboard and hear it making sounds and everything, but the display doesn't wake up. The way I solve that is I just reach behind my display, unplug the power cable and plug it back in, and then the display turns on and, and everything's good. That also probably happens like two or three times a month. The biggest issue I've had is a little weirder and more concerning, and I've seen reports of this happening on every M1 model. So it's not just the Mac mini, it's high-end spec'd out computers, iMacs, MacBooks, whatever. I've seen people talking about this, and that is that sometimes, I've had this happen three or four times over the past nine months, it will just randomly restart in the middle of whatever you're doing. Had it happened during a live stream once, suddenly the computer just restarted. So I don't know what happened. You, you could probably go back in the stream and literally see, which is uh, suddenly my monitor went green and then the computer just restarted for some reason, which has never happened before. Fortunately, it restarted so fast that I was actually able to just continue the stream with only like a one minute interruption. That was cool. And when the computer restarts, I get the dialog box that says your computer has restarted because of a problem. And when I click show more, it says AP watchdog error timeout or something like that. And I looked that up and I actually found a lot of threads online of people talking about this issue, including a pretty extensive thread in Apple's own community discussion support forums. And unfortunately, there's not really a solution. But what has been narrowed down is I believe the wireless AP thing is the AP stands for access point. And the error has something to do with the computer's wireless. I don't know if it like times out and thinks that some certificate has expired and then it needs to reboot. It's weird. It's super unpredictable. I cannot make it happen. I never know when it's going to happen. But like I said, it's only happened three or four times in nine months. I haven't seen that addressed in a specific update. I haven't found solutions to that online. And I have seen lots of other people have that same issue. So that's, that's really the biggest one to be aware of. But again, it wouldn't really stop me from recommending the computer. And then the last thing to address is really all of the, uh, the large number of messages I got more so than usual telling me that I am an idiot and I don't know what I'm talking about after making my first video about the, the M1 Mac mini. And what I have noticed is the M1 chip or the M1 architecture really does require a shift in how you look at computers. Eight gigabytes of RAM on an M1 chip is not the same and does not work the same as eight gigabytes of RAM on an Intel chip. It just doesn't. As someone who has used both for an extended period of time for a lot of projects, it just doesn't work the same. And the other controversial thing about the M1 computers, especially the lower spec'd out RAM models, is SSD swapping, which I didn't know about when I got the computer, and a bunch of people talked to, talk to me about it very politely, as I'm sure you can imagine, saying that one of the reasons the computer can run so efficiently with very little RAM is because it basically uses the SSD as RAM, and it kind of swaps that around and, and does that, and I was like, okay, I don't care, that's fine, but, the concern is that by doing that, it's putting a lot of wear and tear on the SSD, which could then cause it to fail 
soon, which is a problem because the SSDs are just soldered directly into the computer. They're not super replaceable or anything. So I looked into this and I found some articles and stuff. This was a few months ago, so I'm sorry I don't have specific links, but a lot of what I found was on the macrumors.com message boards. There were people running their own experiments and linking to articles. So I'm sure if you go to macrumors, go to their forums and search up some stuff, you could find a lot of info about the like SSD swapping with the RAM and stuff. And basically what I found was, as is the case with most things, there was some truth to it. Swapping out RAM with SSD does put wear and tear on the internal hard drive. However, I have not found that to be an actual issue because one, now M1 computers have been out for like a year and we haven't heard about this widespread SSD issue. Knock on wood by the time I put this video out. But also think about how disastrous it would be for Apple to totally shift everything they're doing to this new chip, market it as the next best thing, people start singing the praises and then everything just starts, you know, totally failing. So basically the, the best example I found was someone did a simulation with, you know, SSD swapping on a base model Mac mini or M1 computer and found that it would shorten the SSD's life to only about eight to 10 years. If it turns out that I spent six or $700 on a computer that just works really, really well and makes my life easy, but only lasts for eight years, I will totally feel like I have gotten my money's worth. Like that computer will have paid for itself many, many times over in that amount of time. And I don't know if this helps with that or not, but I am still using the Hagabus Hub, Hagabus. And this has a one terabyte hard drive that I put inside of it. And then it also has extra USB ports and card readers and stuff. This has worked great. It's not a powered hub though. So certain things like old non SSD hard drives don't work incredibly well off of this. I need to plug those directly into the computer itself, which by the way, I've mounted the computer under my desk and out of the way. That's been super cool. Just really streamlines everything. That mount was a very game changing accessory. So definitely recommend that ultimately. That's where we are after nine months. I hope that I have not just jinxed myself and now everything's just gonna blow up and be terrible after this. But if you're still on the fence over whether or not these relatively affordable base model computers are capable machines that can do what you need to do, I can tell you that yes, they are. And as time goes on and newer versions come out, those are only going to be better and more powerful and more efficient. And you should just totally Totally dive in. The M1 is for M1. If you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much to everyone who supports my channel. I really, really appreciate that. It's also just super fun to get to know everybody and kind of like build little online friendships and stuff. And of course, if you want to know more about workflows and computers and things, I've got a few videos for you that will, uh, will tell you more about computers and, and workflows and stuff. Check them out.